Now, there's a reason for this special program, and you really need this information. You see, math is the language of science, and we have a comparison of the theory of evolution and the concept of creation. We need to see objectively how each would fare under unbiased mathematical examination. And I've asked to come to the studio today a dear personal friend of mine, in fact a colleague, with uh, 38 years of career mathematics professorship under his direction and uh, 35 of those as a math professor at Kilgore High School, more than 20 of those as head of the math department. 13 years paralleling those as adjunct professor of math at Kilgore College. He's a graduate of Texas A&M University and Stephen F. Austin University, an esteemed colleague and a career mathematician who knows what he's talking about. I'd like to welcome Professor John Hefner. Professor, it's always a privilege to have you on the program. Thank you. It's good to be here again. You bring a mathematical verification of data, and that's what we want. How many people do we have alive on planet Earth today? Well, the last published data I've seen is about six and a half billion people on planet Earth. And I wanted to mention that, you know, I've come to believe in the term healthy skepticism. Yes. Uh, I think it's healthy to examine things, not to All swallow things. everything. Yes. There's always been, uh, you know, mistakes and scams even and carpetbaggers and all of that stuff. And uh, so in the realm of science, I think it's good to uh, examine everything with a healthy, open skepticism. And unfortunately, in many science settings, that does not exist. You are not allowed to question certain amounts of Darwinian litany. That's tragic. And, and one is, you know, pretty much this is the story of evolution, and this is the only game in town. And, and oddly enough, we're not necessarily advocating creation be taught, you know. No, we, we uh, really, are I would examining be, the data. I, I would not want somebody teaching it that didn't believe it anyway. Yes. But we do ask for the truth to be taught. Yes. And that's all. And the consequences are rather far-reaching. If creation is true, but we're educated out of even considering it as a proper concept, then we're going to face a creator uh, lacking. On the other hand, if evolution is true, we need to be able to verify it mathematically, which is the language of science, mm -hmm. and need to be able to verify it scientifically. Mm -hmm. Let's crunch some numbers and right. see if the evolutionary model is substantiated. Well, I actually did crunch the numbers. I used the uh, human population growth formula uh, obtained from a pre-calculus math book at Kilgore College, uh, fourth edition by Carl J. Smith, page 200. Anyone could look it up. But here's several evolution scenarios. I took them at their own word that Homo sapiens been around half a million years. And I started with one man and one woman. Now, we could have, and probably they think humans evolve simultaneously pretty much everywhere, but as you're going to see, they have Let's a... be kind to them. Yes, they have a numbers problem, so I'm cutting this as much as I can. Yes. I'm taking their numbers from their publications here, and the growth rate is under one half of one percent. Now, we know that to be uh, verifiable through the data that we do have through the centuries. We can't go back very far, admittedly, but it does appear to be under one half a percent average annual growth rate. Yes. Worldwide, it's about 1.7, so this is certainly conservative. Uh, even at that conservative rate, you would get that figure that we demonstrated earlier in the program, 2.45 times 10 to the 990th power. Uh, oh, uh, clearly wrong. Uh, I hope <laughs> this audience understands that is light years beyond the number of electrons in the universe, beyond the, number, the amount of space available for human bodies in the entire universe, light years beyond that that's right. possibility. So that's absolutely ridiculous, yet the evolutionary community holds on to that concept of deep roots. Well, their editors need to crunch those numbers. If they're going to publish those dates, then they need to publish numbers that work. Yes. And we know the answer. That scenario is obviously not giving the answer. The answer is six and a half billion. So now, let's be a little kinder and uh, we also give them more maybe they're, room. Let me tweak their data a little bit for them, see if we can get it to work. So I said, well, what about 100,000 years? One man, one woman, I can't cut that figure any. Uh, right. And uh, I went one-tenth of one percent. Oh, that's giving less, them a lot than, of slack. Less than we have ever seen any century for which there's recorded data. Still, you get a number 
where you're going to have to move the decimal 43 places to the right. And that is obviously wrong. We're looking for 10 to the ninth power right there. And you have 10 to the 43rd 10 power. 10 to the 43rd not power of people. Not enough space on planet Earth. Not enough space and certainly not what we know to be true through census. Right. And incidentally, if that were true, then where's all the bodies? Uh, oh, yes. You couldn't till your garden without hitting skeletons. And so finally, evolution scenario three, what if we just go 25,000 yes, years ago? I mean, be incredibly kind. I, I don't think any of them would truly accept that. They'd push it back at least a little bit. But I said, well, let's just see what the independent uh, computer calculator is going to give us, because we're just crunching numbers. We're, there's no bias in a calculator of any kind. Two plus two is four for anyone. Yes. Uh, so starting with that, one man, one woman, and an annual growth rate less than we've ever seen recorded still gives 1.44 times 10 to the 11th power mm. of, uh, for the population. Now, some may be tempted to say, well, you got an 11, that's close to a 9. Oh, Must no. be getting close. No, that's uh, actually 144 billion. We've got 6.5 billion. That's 22 times our present population. That's 22 Earths worth of people. Yes. So the only conclusion I think you can academically say is, well, none of those scenarios worked. The evolution of humans did not occur. Exactly. So now to be fair, let's test the biblical scenario. Yes. Starting about 4,500 years ago after this big death event, which we know historically, if the Bible is to be believed, it, it was true. It did happen. And with the four husband and wife units on the ark, that's mm -hmm. eight human beings, and an annual growth rate of under one half of one percent. Yes. We know tracing the very uh, realistic the Jewish line. They've averaged about 0.44 percent throughout recorded history, uh, and and the whole world has been about that same rate, under half a percent average. That would give a world population of six and a half billion. Well, that's what I call a bullseye. Uh, that's right. That's and, precisely and, and what it, we find. And it doesn't require a lot of mental gymnastics, a lot of. Uh, well, get your eraser out, and that's, we're going to have to tweak this or tweak that to try to make it work. Just straightforward data. Exactly. And I had one uh, challenging professor write to me, and he said, well, I can arrive at this if, if I just take the growth rate down low enough. I said, well, we're already lower than any in recorded history, and what, which one would you suggest? And he gave a really low growth rate to accommodate 500,000 years. But that meant that the first couple would have had to have over 10,000 anniversaries before the first child would be born. So you get into some really oh, it's, it's unrealistic ridiculous. affairs. Yes. Now, the, the usual objection to our rate of about a half a percent is, well, you wouldn't have had enough people under that scenario to build the pyramids. Well, I have several things to say about that. Number one, the date for the pyramids changes has changed a lot over history. Yes. And it's always moved forward. For example, in 1929, Encyclopedia Britannica said that the Great Pyramid was built in 4800 B.C. Just 10 years later, on their own volition, they retracted and cut 1,000 years off that and said 3800 B.C. Okay. Uh, as early as this morning on Internet, I've seen 2500 B.C. And actually, I think there's probably 300 more years at least that they need to whittle because uh, what we're finding is that the Egyptian dynasties, they were thought to be sequential and now it is known that they yes. were by and large overlapping and yes. even contemporary if they existed at all and so if you move that forward uh, any at all then there's plenty of people that could have built the pyramid yes in fact uh, could I read a few Absolutely. quotes from uh, the pbs.org website uh, just this morning it says and I quote no single artifact inscription pottery or anything has been found in any place to predate Egyptian civilizations more than 5,000 years ago. And yet we have been incredible. told that it was 10 or 11 or something thousand years yes. ago in the past. And a second quote, as far as how many men it would take, they've been saying, well, it'd take a million, 100,000 men or some huge number. Well, you can only get so many men around a block the size of a Certainly. refrigerator or the size of a Volkswagen or something. You know, you can't get yes. 100 men around it. And it, their quote is, I mean, I'll just take them at their word, it is thought by modern Egyptologists that it took approximately 20,000 men, uh, 20,000 man labor force to build these great pyramids. As opposed to what had been assumed previously of 100,000 exactly. men. And it says, quote again, less than 5,000 men could have quarried and built them in 20 to 40 years. So my point is that if you go by the biblical chronology, we know that the Jews were slaves in Israel. We know they made bricks with straw and so forth till the point Pharaoh said you can't have straw anymore. And uh, we know historically that record is 300 years more recent than where they are right now in their secular thinking. Yes. But look how far they've come.
Let's give them a hand. They're, they're, headed the they're, right they're coming this way. Let's take your pen in this closing moment and place that dot. Six and a half billion people. Professor, would you show how much space on a global basis six and a half billion people would require standing shoulder to shoulder? Yes, this planet is just under 8,000 miles in diameter. So let's draw our circle in Texas, shall we? Just a dot. <laughs> just a dot. Meaning. 30 miles in diameter. <laughs> that the numbers crunched do not give us an evolutionary scenario. And even though planet Earth is imperiled because we've lost the magnetic field to a great degree, we have free radicals saturating the atmospheric context, being imbibed by living creatures. We have major problems, but it's amazingly resilient under these conditions, and the whole population could fit, if necessary, standing shoulder to shoulder in one county in the western state of Texas. And Genesis 9:19 says, the sons of Noah were Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and from these the whole earth was populated, and we can verify it with numbers. Can verify it by crunching the numbers now.